Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today we have a 2003 2.7 liter Dodge Sprinter. Now this thing came in with the initial complaint of water and fuel light on. So this is a little different of a 2.7 that I'm used to dealing with. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's one I've never dealt with before. This one actually has a mechanical low side pressure fuel pump on the engine, which I've never seen before. Also, the fuel filter was a little bit different. The water and fuel sensor is actually under, excuse me, under the fuel filter, which I've never seen. Usually it's on top of the fuel filter and it goes down through the center. So this one here, it had a code for, uh, for the, well, this one had a lot of codes when it came in. It had, it had a, a water level sensor for a P2009, which is water level ser, uh, sensor, water and fuel. Uh, it, this one also had like, fuel delivery pressure too low, fuel pressure malfunction too low, uh, and some glow plug codes. And so I replaced the glow plugs in a module and, uh, and I did a fuel filter just to make sure that we weren't dealing with a crappy uh, fuel filter or that it really wasn't full of water. When I got done, I still had the code. So we moved forward to testing this thing and uh, I'll show you how to do it. I got to use my Devo meter for the first time uh, and, and it was pretty cool because it gave me a definitive uh, test results. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, before I do, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell so you get notified of all my future content, which you're definitely going to want to see. All right, let's get into it. Let me show you how to test this thing. All right, so I've got my own meter showing that there is continuity between the pins of the wiring. Now the thing that you have to look at is, and they deal with this all the time, is that that wire that's on top is red with a yellow tracer. According to the diagram, it is black with a yellow tracer. So I could still have a short in the harness testing this with an ohm meter. So what we're gonna do is we are going to remove the leads. And we are going to hook it up to the Devo meter. Okay, so now looking at this, we have the same voltage across the meter showing that there is no voltage drop. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this button right here and that is gonna load this circuit. Now, if there is a short in this wire, it will show in a voltage drop. So there is a 0 0.01 voltage drop on this circuit. That shows you right there that there is not a short in this harness. So that is the benefit to using this Devo meter right here. Not to mention, these forward probes right here that I've got hooked up. Now you can see I am probed right into the ECM connector. Now this is the smallest one going into this pin. Now the good thing about this is that I did not spread the pin on the ECM connector. I have the exact same one down there on the water and fuel sensor connector. Now I also did the same thing to the 12 volt supply wire to make sure that that wire is not shorted to anything as well. The other part of this that I had to use was I also had to remove the main relay, which is right here, and I had to jumper two pins in my flowchart. So what I did was I took one of my Devo leads here, and I've got my pins here, and what I did was I put these into the terminals for the relay. And by doing that, I was able to do my flow chart. Now this is all with the Devo meter and using all the forward probes. Now the cool thing about this is the leads for the Devo meter are like this. You have a fused 22 foot cable that hooks to the battery, comes over here and it hooks to the Devo meter and it shows you what battery voltage is. And then you hook up your other leads to the different circuits and that shows you the voltage that's available. Now I know for sure that this thing needs an ECM and not a wiring repair. All right, and just for confirmation, what I did was I cut the signal wire. 
I cut the signal wire right there and I don't have any voltage and that shows that I do not have a short in the harness because if I did, I would be reading voltage right now with the ECM plugged in and the water and fuel sensor plugged in, I have system voltage indicating that I have a short in my ECM. All right, I'm gonna let this thing run and get hot and make sure it doesn't stall. All right, so the flow chart for this um, P2009 code goes like this. Clear the code. Did the DGC set again? Yes, mine won't clear. I'm gonna disconnect the water and fuel sensor and you're gonna check the voltage. If the signal voltage is above 5.5, we're gonna go to step three. My voltage is 11.6. All right, let's go to the next step. Okay, so this step right here, it's gonna be with the ignition off, we're gonna disconnect the water and fuel sensor. We're gonna disconnect the ECM connectors. We're gonna remove the main relay and we're gonna jumper cavity 30 and 87. Gonna turn the ignition on and we're checking to see if the voltage is below one volt. The voltage is not below one volt. So they're saying repair the signal circuit. All right. So this is where we go into testing the wire. And they're saying that the signal circuit has a problem. So we went to the next step just to see what the next step was. The next step was to remove the 12 volt supply circuit and you're ohm testing each end of the wire and you're looking for it to be open. Actually, you're testing from the water and fuel sensor signal circuit on one end and you're testing for the 12 volt supply on the other end. We do not have continuity indicating that these two wires are closed. All right, so here's our water and fuel sensor and here's our signal circuit. As you can see, our signal circuit goes straight to the ECM with no breaks, splices, or connections. The water and fuel 12 volt supply also comes over here, this red wire, and goes up straight to the sensor. So what we did was check the signal wire from one end to the other, and we have 0.00, .00 continuity indicating there's no signs of a problem. We checked the 12 volt wire from the sensor connector to the ECM in the same result. So now the flow chart is stating that we have, an, we have an, uh, a shorted, uh, we have a problem with this wire. So what we do is we connected this end to that end we went a step further than testing continuity. We went ahead and got the Devo meter out and we load tested this. And that told us that this circuit is good. Okay, so if you do any sort of drivability, if you do any sort of diagnostics or anything like that, you know, you're gonna wanna get you know, a good power probe. You're gonna wanna have a good multimeter, but it only will take you so far because a lot of times you can have a wire and let's say that wire has 10 strands of wire through it and let's say all of them are broken except for one or you have a shorted circuit you can pass a continuity test and even a voltage test but it can't carry the load and the load is what you have to test for so what we did in this video is i showed you how to load the circuit to make sure that there was nothing wrong with the wiring at all whatsoever. Now we replaced the ECM in this thing and everything turned out fine. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell you get notified of all my future content which you're definitely going to want to see. Also check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic. I'll show you what I'm working on from a day-to-day -day basis. Gas, diesel, sometimes just easy hanging and banging struts and shocks or even complicated diags and most of all diesels so check out my merchandise store where you can get a t-shirt or a coffee cup and support the channel thanks for watching the video i'll see you next time